fans of a Horus heresy, orbital interdiction by Legionis Astartes flying assets, and the evolution of classic designs over time. Thank you very much for joining me for a quick video to capture a moment which I thought was something that may not happen again to me for some time, if ever. So I thought we'll have a quick video of it. And you've probably already deduced by what's in frame. And here we have the two Thunderhawk gunships that have been produced by Forgewall. So here we have the 2002 version, which was designed by Tim Adcock. And here we have the 2016 version that was designed by Darren Parwood. I think I'm right on the 2016 being a Darren Parwood design. Anyone knows different, let me know in the comments. Two very impressive models, very expensive models as well. And this one is my own and long time viewers of the channel will recognize it from a couple of videos I've done about it. Whereas this one is a commission that I've just completed and before this goes off to its new home, I thought I'd just do a quick video comparing the two, just having a quick look at some of the features and designs and how they've changed between the two designs. And then once I've compared and contrasted them, I'll just show off a few of the features on this new Thunderhawk, which I've been playing around with and magnetizing beyond what the kit normally allows. Just before getting to this a few years ago, I did a detailed video on a previous Thunderhawk commission build that I'd done. So I'm not going to retread the same ground I've done with that, but I'm going to look at new stuff I did with this one. If you're interested in that first video with a more detailed examination of the kit, I will leave a link in the description. So without further ado, let's begin. So firstly, right, what changed between the 2002 version and the 2016 version? Well, before I even answer that question, I think we first need to start off by saying, well, what do we call these? Do we call this the Mark I Forge World or and the Mark II Forge World, or do we call this the Thunderhawk Mark III and the Thunderhawk Mark IV? And that's because prior to this, there were two designs that came before it made by Games Workshop, one of which is the famous Toe Smasher. Let's, as we're quite Forge Worldy on this channel, let's call this the Mark I and the Mark II. And at some future date, once this model is finished and I do a video about it, and we'll get into a lot of stuff in that, I'll go through a bit of design history as well. So what's changed? We'll start big and go to the smaller things. Here on the Mark I, we had a high T-tail, which you can see there. On the Mark II, we've got a single fin design. So this one is very reminiscent of, you know, mid to late war jet designs. So for example, the BAC-111, the VC-10, the TriStar, and some heavy lift aircraft still operate today. So for example, the C-5 Galaxy or the, the C-17 Globemaster, I think. This Thunderhawk, however, has a single fin tail. So it gives it a somewhat sleeker design. And talking of sleeker design, this model has got a very boxy fuselage. It's like a flying brick. The Mark II is not exactly aerodynamic. However, it does have the chamfered sides to the fuselage, which gives it a somewhat sleeker appearance. So that was another change. Sticking with big obvious stuff, the cockpit design is radically different. So here we have this heavy framed chunky canopy, you know, relatively limited visibility, whereas the new one has got much larger single panel windows. Although the number of windows is similar, but the forward view, certainly from the windows, is much greater on the Mark II than the Mark I. Although I'm sure in reality, both would have a lot of camera systems that would afford a full visual view outside the vehicle. Other things, wings. So the wings on the Mark I are level, as you can see, whereas on the Mark II, an anhedral design has been adopted. So the wings droop down. And that I think really adds to the effect with the tail as well. It's almost like a Y shape. Uh, an, an inverted Y shape or a, a straight ended lambda sign. And I think that works really well. It's a clever overall adjustment. Although those of you who follow me on Instagram will have seen what this looks like with that tail. And we could just do that now quickly. Obviously the parts aren't designed to go on each one, but I think that actually looks really rather good. The T-tail on the Mark II. The Mark I with the single fin tail though, it does look a little bit naked. So other changes, the main weapon. So on the Thunderhawk, this is the titular Thunderhawk cannon. Whereas on the Mark I, that is the turbo laser destructor. And that's the only weapon option you get in that. But in the Mark I, you actually got both. You got the turbo laser destructor and the Thunderhawk cannon, which uh, I decided to have some fun with magnets. 
and make them interchangeable. So yeah, I can put either on. I do rather like the Thumbhawk Cannon, and particularly with the muzzle brake and barrel drilled out, it really works, I feel. Other changes, so it's starting to move into some slightly more subtle things, but now we need to look underneath the Thunderhawk. So here, you can see the air scoop for the Sentine engine is like so. Whereas on the Mark II, it's very different. We've got these side air intakes and then the Sentine air intake as well. So it's like it's got a separate air intake system for the Sentine engine, which I quite like. So I'm continuing on with more subtle changes. So the attack wings, which are these, they're much thinner on the Mark I than the Mark II. The Mark II, they're really quite chunky. Continuing on with chunkiness, the Citadel that mounts the main gun on the Mark I Thunderhawk is quite hefty and has got these large sensors in it. This looks like some sort of targeting system. That looks like a comma ray. Whereas on the Mark II, it's much sleeker, more in profile, and with a more subtle set of sensors. The heavy bolters are redesigned on the nose. These have got a much more wider field of fire, but far less aerodynamic than the slimmer cheat designs here, although those wouldn't have the same field of fire. Interestingly, the heavy bolters on the underside of the wings are identical, completely unchanged between the two. And you could actually, you can actually swap these parts between the two models. They are cross compatible. Not that I imagine necessarily be wanting to do that. So sticking with subtle changes, what else do we have? The Thunderstrike missiles aren't on this one yet, but they are about 5% shorter than the Thunderstrikes on the Mark II. And the Mark II Thunderstrikes are also a bit chunkier as well. So a little tweak there in terms of movable features, the Mark I has ailerons on canards that are separate that you can pose, and same on the cross tail. Now on the Mark II, obviously there's no cross tail fin to have ailerons on, I think they're called that. And on the forward canards, they are fixed. So a small change there. Another slightly more subtle change. On the Mark I Thunderhawk, the forward troop bay access doors, this one, and this one, as you can see, they are offset to one another. On the Mark II, those two doors are in line. Another change, not so much in design, well, partially in design, so we've already talked about the cockpit, but in materials. This is a piece of cast resin with panes in it for using some sort of perspex or transparent plastic card for doing the windows. On the Mark II, however, the part is now a clear resin. An interesting choice. Some internal differences that we can't see here. On the Mark I Thunderhawk, the flight deck is accessed by a ladder at the rear of the flight deck here. So it comes up here and, come, and then the crew would come across here. On the Mark II Thunderhawk, there are a pair of ladders that come up to the flight deck from the troop bay below. And that's how the cockpit will be accessed. There's no rear access. The main engines are surprisingly similar. They're these long, thin turbojet style designs with these large complex vector thrust arrays at the back. And they are almost identical, the two engine designs. Essentially, the only difference is this was made by hand, and you can see some of the jankiness of that, whereas that has been CAD designed, but that is an exact reproduction of that by a computer-assisted design. Some minor differences in terms of panelling detail on the wings you can see there. And then another thing while we're looking at the rear of the Thunderhawk is the air brake design. Now, on the Mark I Thunderhawk, the air brakes aren't fitted, but they hinge forward like so. They're not fitted yet, so I've not uh, got around to doing that bit of the build. Whereas on the Mark II, they hinge at the rear. And that, if I can get the finger foo right, it went like that. So another change. Subtle, but, you know, it's a difference. Now, the last cannons. The last cannons on the tips of the attack wings. 
So here it's very much a design similar to the Landrader, the Jez Goodwin Landrader, and I think the last cannons on the original were lifted straight off that. Whereas on the Mark II, it's this much slimmer and more elegant design. And this actually looks a lot like the rearward firing Ardex Defensor last cannons on the Warlord Titan, which interestingly was another Darren Parwood design, so perhaps that's why. Almost Eldar like in their elegance as last cannons, very unusual for an Imperial weapon. And then I think probably. One of the last big differences, I mean, obviously there's a lot of detail differences, but one of the last big differences is in the landing gear. And on the Mark I, we can see how the struts go to the landing feet with a single leg. Whereas if we now look at the Mark II, we can see the landing gear is much more substantial. And there's three struts. There's a main aft strut, a four strut, and then a like a tertiary strut. The front landing gear design though is the same. And while I'm holding this, let me point out two of the last details. Firstly, the attitude control thrusters. We've got these larger retros on the Mark II, which can be positioned and posed. And we also have a ventral fin as well. So while it doesn't have a T-tail, it does have a ventral fin. If we look at the Mark I, we can see there is no ventral fin and the thrusters are these fixed details on the model and it doesn't have as many up front it's much smaller and more subtle so that's another small ish but nonetheless notable visual difference and i think that's probably all the changes oh there is one other thing i like to point out on the mark one thunderhawk it has this here this pitot boom or sensor boom you could call it i magnetize this for safety and uh, so it's quite fragile better to have it accidentally boing cough on the Mark II, there is no sensor boom. And I think that's probably a fairly decent overview of the key design differences between the two models. Obviously, when you get into the smaller details, there is a lot of difference, and I'm not going to get into that today. Right, now let's take a little look at a few interesting features I added to the Mark II. So let me show you a couple of things. I mean, I've already showed you the air brakes, but on this one, I improved what I did on the last design where I articulated them, but now there's a magnet fitted that holds it open and closed as well. So slightly more elegant design there in terms of the actual how the feature works. And these are very satisfying to open and especially to close. Another thing that I did at the request of a client this time was to modify the forward hatches so they could open the side and rear hatches so that's this one this one and this one as long as my hands hold out i'll show you what happens there you go so they now hinge open like that and you can just bob your finger in there and that one opens and then the same for this one here well this is slightly trickier to open there we go but not that much now i've painted the interior as well But yeah, that's uh, really rather satisfying that. Very pleased with how that turned out. And I like to think it's, uh, well, this was a client's idea, but the Thunderhawk is set up as if it's on the pad with these hatches open. I actually think it looks really good. And uh, of course, these are super satisfying to click open and click closed. So there you have it, a quick video comparing the details and features of the Ford World Mark I Thunderhawk and Mark II Thunderhawk. So I hope you found this an interesting video exploring two very cool, and in the case of this one now, quite rare models. And yeah, just showing you what they're about. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. I'd just like to say thank you to my client for allowing me to make some content around his Thunderhawk. Thank you very much. I do appreciate that a lot. As always, please do share your thoughts and observations in the comment section. I'll be interested to hear those. And at some point in the future, I will be doing a more detailed video on my Mark I Forge World Thunderhawk because it's a fascinating model with some great history and background to it. But other than that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time and goodbye.